This is a supplementary video for the longer video on X86 front end complexity. This video shows a simulation of the Pentium MMX front end decoding. In this example, the CPU is operating in 16 bit mode, to be consistent with the 8086 example. This simulation is not 100% accurate as it does not take into account certain details that would only add complexity and confusion. For example, there are limitations regarding decoding range of the prefetch buffer, but those are ignored as they would add extra dead cycles. Additionally, stalls caused by the backend are not accounted for here, and all branches are assumed not taken, since we are only concerned with decoding. Furthermore, pipeline parability is not considered, as it would hinder the parallel execution aspect of the simulation. Let's go over the decoding rules. This is a simplified rule set, which we can use in the simulation. Prefix bytes can only be decoded at a rate of 1 per cycle. This means that an instruction with 3 prefix bytes will take a minimum of 4 cycles. Additionally, either a prefix byte or instructions can be decoded each cycle, not a mixture of both. There are two exceptions to this rule. The first is that the 0f prefix is considered part of the opcode, and thus two escaped instructions can decode in the same cycle. The second is that a single length mod prefix can decode in the udecoder and apply to an instruction in the vdecoder. This only applies to single length mod prefixes. If the prefix accumulator already contains a length mod, then the instruction must singularly decode in the UD coder. And finally, instructions longer than 7 bytes will take up both U and V slots. In such a case, only one instruction can decode in that cycle. First, a quick overview of the simulation layout. Note that the layout differs slightly from the other simulations. A cycle counter can be seen in the upper left to keep track of the decoding progress. The color-coded legend is along the top, where each byte has been identified by its corresponding function within the given instruction. Note that the Pentium MMX treats the escape code 0F as part of the opcode and has been marked as such. This is to provide a significant speedup with the newly introduced MMX extensions and be able to decode up to 2 per cycle. The instruction byte stream is at the top and goes in left to right, top to bottom order, as shown by the arrows. The current decode program counter is shown by a magenta arrow in the byte stream. The decode window is below the instruction byte stream. This window is the output of the prefetch buffer as seen by the first aligner. It's a sliding window which begins at the location marked by the decode program counter. The aligner windows can be seen below the decode byte stream. These are the windows as seen by the two decoders. The first decoder is the stationary U decoder, in which the window is aligned. The second decoder is the V decoder, which no longer imposes a parability requirement due to the instruction queue. However, it instead poses a byte length requirement. Given the length predecoder on the Pentium MMX, the V decoder will behave accordingly. It will be assumed, however, that the predecoder is perfect as to not introduce additional complexity into the simulation. The current decoder state is shown below the decode window. The boxes are shaded in corresponding to the U and V decoders, respectively. This section shows the accumulated prefix bytes for the decoders, with the black arrows denoting accumulation. If the black arrow is coming from the left of the first state box, then it indicates an accumulation from the previous cycle. Unlike with the original Pentium, the Pentium MMX is capable of accumulating certain prefixes while decoding in the same cycle. This specifically applies to the length modification prefixes 66 and 67. Other prefixes require at least one cycle to decode. Unfortunately, this accumulation cannot be demonstrated with this byte stream, as the relevant instruction exceeds the dual issue byte length and thus needs an additional cycle. There are four additional symbols which will be used to help show the decoding actions. A green check is used to indicate that an instruction was decoded in the given decoder. A blue circle with a cross is used to indicate prefix accumulation. This would update the decoder state, but not decode an instruction. An orange bow tie indicates that an instruction uses both decoders. And a red circle with diagonal cross will be used to indicate that the given decoding has been squashed. And finally, the instruction history stream is at the bottom. This shows which instructions have been decoded with a three-cycle history. Multiple instructions per cycle will be delineated by a colon. The cumulative instructions per cycle is also shown and will be updated each cycle. Now to begin the simulation. With the simulation complete, we can see how this front end compares to the others. Again, a reminder that the simulated IPC is based on the same byte stream across all processors for demonstration purposes and may not reflect real world workloads. Also, this IPC is the limit imposed by the front end and does not take into account cache, branch, memory operations, microcode emulation, or back end behavior. With that said, we can see that the Pentium MMX performs much better than the original Pentium. 
It even outperforms the AMD K6 in decoding, although that's largely due to the fact that both architectures essentially have the same number of decoders, but the Pentium MMX has more intelligent coupling. When accounting for the back end however, the Pentium MMX performance will be much closer to, if not less than, the AMD K6. Essentially, the Pentium MMX is back-end limited, while the K6 is much more front-back balanced. This is largely due to the pairing restrictions in the Pentium MMX, the multi-cycle operation limitations, and the minuscule instruction window, compared to the K6. Anyway, if you found this interesting, please check out the other decoding simulation videos, as well as the more detailed video going over the front-end architectures. Thanks for watching.